All right, for those of you that can hear me, my name is uh, Travis Sheckle. I'm one of the uh, software applications managers from Dallas. And we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, TI Multicore and uh, Open OpenCL. Um, unfortunately, we do have a little problem with uh, one of our demos, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the material and kind of show you a representation of, of the output. So uh, is anyone here familiar with uh, our multi-core products, DSP products? Couple. I know I've talked with a few folks, so. Um, okay, so that gives me an idea where to start from. Um, so Keystone is the architecture that TI branded about a year and a half ago. We introduced our first Keystone products. Um, really, it's uh, architecture that supports our multi-core DSP product family. It's really based for high, high processing compute um, on DSP, um, real time. So our goal is to, give, is to give you the highest performance DSP that you can have out there on the market today, both for floating point as well as fixed point processing, but bring that to you in a very low power solution, and that's our, that's our goal. So in order to enable that, you obviously have to have a bunch of high-speed I.O. peripheral on that DSP. We support things such as PCI Express, Serial Rapid I.O., um, Gigabit Ethernet, Hyperlink. All these are CERTES-based interfaces that, that you can use. Um, our current product out today um, consisted of DSP cores, up to eight cores. In November of last year, we introduced uh, Keystone 2. The Keystone 2, we introduced having multi-core multi DSP as well as multi-core ARM cores, A15 cores to be exact, on the same die. Um, so you have a lot of processing power. There's shared memory available to both the ARMs and the DSPs. Um, in the case of the ARMs, we're uh, cache coherent. Um, there's an opportunity to use accelerators on the DSPs, such as um, the security accelerator, a uh, Packet, packet accelerator that does packet inspection and forwarding on the Ethernet, as well as there's wireless accelerators for WCDMA and LTE as well. And I already mentioned the I.O. that's, that's uh, available on those devices. It's all tied together with what we call Terranet, which is a very large, fast, internal um, switch network, 256 bits or 128 bits, up to CPU over two speeds. And on, sits on top of the Terranet as our multi-core navigator, which is a hardware um, mechanism that manages queues for you so you don't have to use uh, CPU power to manage queues. You can do message passing between cores. You can do uh, messaging between CPUs and peripherals using that. So today, the product offering looks like this. We've got uh, single core DSPs in our C665X family. These are optimized for low, um, low airflow applications, very power um, optimized, anywhere from two to three and a half watts. Next, we have the C667 family, which is our highest performance DSP product out there. Um, this is a scalable platform all the way from one DSP core to eight DSP cores. Um, again, here we've got plenty of custom off-the-shelf uh, board available. Um, I'll go through these in another slide too, but um, there's plenty of offerings there. And then the last family you see there is the 66A family. We changed our naming a little bit. If you're not familiar with it, um, what we wanted to highlight was the now um, our capability of having ARM on the, on the devices. So the 66 means it's a C66 core for DSP. The A stands for ARM. The K is for Keystone 2. So here we now, again, we've taken that high performance DSP that we had in our first Keystone product. Now we've added ARM. We've got that capability to do a lot of control functions and network management. All right. So we don't just give you the silicon. Uh, we don't just give you the EVM. We give you software platform that goes around that. And this is just a quick slide to illustrate, illustrate that. We call it our multi-core software developers kit. Um, we're giving you all the basic things that, that you need to get started. Um, we give you CSL, which is an abstraction layer from hardware, so you can program um, registers. <clears throat> we give you low-level drivers. 
so they don't have to go in and bit bang on all the registers in a given peripheral to use them. Um, on top of that, we give you trace and debug capabilities. We give you support for both, uh, both operating systems, whether that be DSP BIOS or ARM Linux. Um, we support both of those in our MCSDK. And then we're also going to give you a bunch of um, platform-specific software that goes along with our EVM. So the goal there is you can do your development on the EVM. Um, when you want to move that to your custom board or your own board, the only parts that you really have to change are the platform-specific portions, maybe like your DDR, maybe your Ethernet, PHY, that sort of thing. And in that MCSDK, we're going to roll in a bunch of uh, example code and demos that you can use to, to further develop and get, get up to speed quicker on, on our products. That all plugs into our Code Composer Studio, which is um, CCS. It's an Eclipse-based IDE. And we're going to also support um, what you can see up there is some of the Linux tooling. All right, so just a, one more slide on uh, the EVM availability. Um, we deliver our uh, EVMs in the AMC form factor, so you can plug in the DSP into micro TCA chassis and do development right in the chassis. Uh, this is just giving you a flavor of uh, some of those products we talked about today. With our new Keystone 2, we've gone to a, a double a double wide uh, EVM. And then here again are some of the boards that you have available to you that come from uh, third parties that have developed with uh, some of our high performance DSPs. So what I'm showing here is a, a couple cards by uh, Advantech. They are the Quad, quad CC, our C6678 card. We've got an Octal and we also have a full um, ATCA blade that has 20 of these C6678 devices on it. The demo that we were trying to show today um, was going to use one of the Octal cards and demonstrate OpenCL. So we get the question a lot, how do you design with multi-core? It's a little easier when there's a single core or even one or two cores, but when you go to multiple cores up to eight, how do you program? You need ways to um, program that device and excel use that device really as an accelerator to perform your functions. So some of the things that we offer, of course, TI has their own libraries, um, optimized libraries, things such as FFT Lib, DSP Lib for filtering and FFTs. We also have um, libraries in the area of high performance compute like BLAST and we're working on Linpack. Those can be built up and you can optimize for a given core. Now, how do, you take, how do you take those and make use of the multiple cores? This is where we start getting into um, capabilities that include OpenMP and OpenCL. OpenMP is already in full support by TI. Our compiler supports that. It allows you to basically um, choose a master core on your die, and that core will run the, the DSP program, the sequential program. When, he runs, when that DSP runs to a point where he can parallelize the data and make use of the other cores, he um, basically farms that out to the other cores. The other cores work on their portion of the, of the code and create, create a response, form that back into the master core, and he continues on to the program. So in that respect, it's like a fork and join kind of uh, methodology. Our compiler already understands the directives, um, the C directives, to take advantage of that programming. OpenCL, OpenCL is a little new, newer to us. Um, OpenCL allows you to have a host, whether that be like an um, Intel processor sitting on a PC or an ARM core sitting on the die with the DSPs. You have a host that runs the program, and he is going to distribute the, the parallel jobs out to the other DSP cores and take advantage of, of the DSPs and the, and the fact that they are giving you high performance, they're able to crank out the data with very low power. Um, so the OpenCL portion, we're in the alpha stages of supporting, and that's what we're going to demo here, um, allows you to basically um, write standard C, C code and farm that out. You could run that C code on an Intel processor or run it on our, on our DSP. And that's, that's the advantage there. Um, it allows you to basically um, take advantage of different architectures, port it very easily. 
So OpenCL is basically a, uh, the first kind of open, open computing language. Um, it provides, like I said, that uniform um, programming environment so you can write the same code on, on multiple devices um, and port it easily. Um, TI is a member on the working group in the, uh, in the consortium managed by the Kronos group. And what we're going to show today is an example of using OpenMP to solve a Mandelbrot equation. So if you're not familiar with uh, what Mandelbrot is, um, it's basically a, um, this, this, the equation that's here, Zn equals Zn minus 1 squared plus C. It's, um, he's defining a set of complex coordinates that when you plug it into that equation and you iterate on that equation multiple times, if the equation keeps increasing and diverging and, and approaching infinity, it would not be considered a, a, a set point in the, man, in the Mandelbrot set. So for example, if you plugged in a one into that equation and you iterated on it many times, you can see that that equation approaches infinity. So that would not be a point um, that would be considered one of the points in the Mandelbrot set. But when you deal with the complex, complex plane, that's where they're bounded. And if, if it's bounded, then it's considered one of those points. And one of the nice things about an example like this is that you can use, um, you can use and show it visually with, with a, a graphic plot, and which we'll get to in just a second. So this is, this is the setup for our OpenCL uh, demo. Basically, we have a Linux host, um, which is an Intel processor running Linux. Um, he's farming out the jobs using OpenC OpenCL, um, calling basically a command queue to uh, run on the DSP. We have two, um, I'm sorry, we're, we're using them. For this one, we're using uh, a, single, a single quad Shannon card or a single quad C6678 card. And the way that we are breaking that um, demo up is we're taking a, an image. Uh, and this one, it's, it's highlighted as 1024 by 1024 pixels. Um, we are dividing that problem into uh, four regions, equal regions. We're sending one-fourth of that, that image to each of the DSPs. And then within each of, that re each of those regions, we are computing one line, one line of pixels per core. That's how we're going to divide this, this, pro, this problem up. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to treat each pixel as a, a complex um, coordinate. And we're going to feed that into the equation. And then we're going to iterate on that equation for each pixel a thousand times. And if it stays bounded, for that thousand iterations, we're going to consider that one of the one of the set points. And if that's if it is bounded, um, we're going to color that black. If it's not, if it, it keeps on expanding, then we're, we color that with a color depending on on uh, depending on the value. All the math that we use is double precision, and we're going to iterate. We're basically going to zoom in on this image and run about. 155 frames. We're going to run to the 1 e to the 15th um, as far as the, that's how far we can uh, support here with the, our double precision. So with that being said, um, I'm going to show you a representation here. Show the image and we're, we're con continually zooming in on the image and the picture that you see represented, again, depends on the blacks or the colors, depend on the, uh, whether or not that point is in the, is in the set. So that'll give you, that gives you some idea of what, uh, what the Mandelbrot plot looks like. And so that you understand that complex uh, math that's going on, the double precision algorithm that we're running. Basically, here's a kind of a summary of uh, benchmarks that we've done here at TI with the OpenCL code running that Mandelbrot um, example. Um, the first one is um, on the quad, quad card that we just talked about. It's, so it's running on 32 different cores, four cores, or four devices, eight cores each, running at 1.25 gigahertz. Um, 
I'll come back to this, this power column in a minute, um, but the time that it takes to basically process 155 of those frames, 500 pixels by 500, we reduced it a little bit for this table, um, was 9.1 seconds. You can compare that to um, running our, our same TI code on the Intel processor on the PC, and that same 155 frames takes uh, 26.6 uh, seconds. And then when we used uh, Intel's own uh, OpenCL application or implementation, it, it ran at 30.4. And then finally, uh, the NVIDIA uh, video processing card that was is on the machine, um, it took 21.3 seconds. So when you, pro when you come up with a, a a, uh, frames per second, that's what this column is showing. What really makes the DSP really stand out is when you start talking about power. These are not pow measured power numbers, okay? These are published max power numbers that are offered for those devices. So you can see that the DSP really shines by having um, with, with a, uh, a point of 3.17 watts per frame per second. So that's the whole benefit of using the DSPs as accelerators, performance for low power, and this, this demo hopefully showed or shows you how that you can use OpenCL to achieve um, using those DSPs as the accelerator cards. And that's really all I have, um, just some summary remarks about OpenCL that we, we've kind of covered. Um, but I'd be happy to talk with anybody offline on on our DSPs or OpenCL in general. Thank you.